Flamingo OS busted out onto the scene in July of 2022, replacing COSP and using a different code base from AOSP to CAF. But unfortunately, not even a year on, the devs have had to step away due to time constraints, leaving Flamingo on ice. So how does this final version hold up? Our last Flamingo OS release is 2.3 which is Android 13 with a November security patch. Bear in mind that the 7 series has recently also reached end of life, with the December security patch being the last official release from OnePlus. But that's only Android 12, so you're at least ahead on that front. Overall performance has been great, with everything feeling fluid and smooth. It does help that it takes advantage of the 90Hz display, but there is no ability to change the resolution if you're after a bit more battery life. A quick run through of Geekbench 5 showed above average 7T Pro scores, but app management wasn't as good. I ran three separate eight hour don't kill my app benchmarks, and two didn't do so well with their alarm scheduling, bringing the total score down to 72%. Feature wise, Flamingo strikes quite a good balance. Not overloading things like MIUI, but still including many helpful day-to-day -day features, while throwing in a few custom tweaks that you start to really appreciate. Some of my favorites are being able to pick and choose which icons appear in the status bar, tweaking the quick settings, an actually useful flashlight gesture, unlimited Google Photos, and spam filtering. The best part though is retaining all the great OnePlus stuff, like drawing gestures, alert slider, horizon light, and double tap to turn the display on and off. We even get the ability to remove the bottom bar and still retain the swipe gesture while it's hidden, letting you take advantage of the full 7 series display. It does push the keyboard down in the process though, so your typing may take a hit. That display does look excellent too, with the auto brightness being pretty decent. It does sometimes need a second to hit the right spot, but being able to add a brightness slider to a single swipe down of the quick settings menu helps overcome any missteps with a quick flick. The under display fingerprint reader has performed amazingly, with no complaints once I registered the same thumb twice, and the auto rotate implementation is perfect. It's essentially off with the rotate prompt appearing when you do give it a flick. The best option for people like me who could never get auto rotate to ever work properly. Unfortunately, the lawn chair launcher that was used in Flamingo Android 12 didn't make its return as it was never updated with Android 13 support. But the included quick step launcher is speedy and has enough options to keep me happy. Many of them being simple toggles rather than lawn chairs full blown customizations though with the biggest omission being an app hide feature. For the important stuff, we retained L1 Widevine just fine, so Disney Plus looked good. I also had no issues with my banking app, Google Pay, or Teams. There is an issue with YouTube though, and it's not the only one, with multiple reports suggesting 2.3 contains more bugs than the version prior. The biggest is probably YouTube though, where anything HD at 60 frames just ends up laggy. There may also be issues recording video, sending voice messages, and other micro-related faults, but there were no issues casting video at least. As for photos, the stock camera works just fine, but it is a bit light on detail and doesn't preserve shadows all that well. Luckily, Gcam exists and helps capture some great shots even works on all lenses. This thing can definitely still nab some great photos, but don't expect miracles in low light, and sometimes the autofocus can get a little confused. Lastly, battery performance was good. While skipping the always on display, I had no issues making it the 16 hours off charge, with around four hours of screen on time, and 30% left in the tank, giving me a decent amount of leeway. Flamingo has often been the go-to for my 7T Pro. Its nice blend of features and stability really work for me. 
with enough of the great OnePlus stuff to make it an easy transition too. Unfortunately, 2.3 tends to be a bit heavier on the bugs, leaving the final version worse off than the one preceding it. So perhaps if you do still want to give the bird a go, try 2.2 instead. Otherwise, at least there are other ROMs still being actively supported for this legendary device.